What's up, everybody? Hey, it's Brian, and we're doing a final for the Kona Toy Group build. This is final number one. We have a final for the Optimus Prime build that should be coming up here pretty soon. But uh, we are done with uh, the inspiration for the whole group build, which was building um, a model replica or clone of uh, one of our favorite Hot Wheels from our childhood, which was the Polar Plus uh, car here. Now, this is actually a Ford Bronco. It's got the 427 on there and all that jazz. But um, I do love that Bronco body style, but I understand that model kits for that particular type of body style Bronco are stupid expensive. So we had this kit in the stash, uh, the Mad Mudder, and um, it's the same basic principle of vehicle. So we decided to go ahead and modify this to match the color scheme and paint job of this guy here. And I think we... We did pretty good. Um, now, the Hot Wheel itself is a little bit on the faded side, as we can see. So our color palette, <laughs> color palette uh, that we had was just a little bit brighter, a little, more, a little bit richer color, I should say. So uh, I still think it's a good color combination for the build. Doesn't match exactly the Hot Wheel, but that's of course thirty years, thirty years of sunlight fading, and all that kind of jazz. So you know, thirty years of UV. Um, I did decide to go ahead and do the weights up front in, uh, you know, like a flat red to simulate um, sort of like the box art here. Uh, back when I used to watch tractor pulls and, and uh, truck pulls and stuff like that, um, I used to be fascinated by these types of vehicles. So that's one of the reasons why I love that Hot Wheel. And to find a model kit like that was just really special. So uh, when I saw this um, at my friend's house for sale and I snapped it up, I thought, yeah, this is definitely what we're going to do with this kit. Um, yeah, the hood does say 350. That's a departure from the from the uh, from the Hot Wheel, which says 427. But in the instructions, it says that this guy here is running a small block 350. So I thought, let's just go ahead and honor that. So um, a friend of ours in the community, we reached out to him, and uh, he was able to make uh, some vinyl uh, stencils for us, uh, which were perfect. We sent him measurements from the Hot Wheel. He was able to scale them up in size. And he, w you know, I sent some photos, of course, also, and he was able to find a font and a size and everything like that. That was just perfect. Sent us back the stencils, and that's how we did the uh, lettering on the side. Uh, all the um, all the uh, stutter stripes here on the side, that's all done uh, with just masking tape along with the red. Um, the numbers on the hood, those are actually just the vinyl decals themselves. Uh, masking and painting one more time was just not, <laughs> just not in my cards. I just like, I was like, I'm done. <laughs> but uh, the only thing about this kit is because the exhaust stacks come out through the hood, um, taking the hood off is no longer really an option. It's not glued down, but it's not really, you know, taking them off is, taking the hood off isn't really an option, but we can see a lot down inside there. Uh, we did wire the engine and use a, um, a parts by parts wiring set uh, to just sort of give it a little extra detail in there. And then we did the old um, uh, vinyl tubing with a copper wire down the center for, for the radiator hose pipe. Uh, because the one that came with the kit, not only was it too short, but it was also very, very anemic looking. So we thought, well, let's just upgrade that a little bit. Um, around the side here, we I, I did color in this uh, marker light. I have to do that on the other side still, I guess. So, uh, whoops. <laughs> but uh, interior, super basic. It just has the one seat for the driver, of course. And um, we were thinking about doing seat belts and all that jazz, but then I thought, no, we're departing from the Hot Wheel, the theme, pretty far so far. So let's just go ahead and finish it off as, as he is. Um, the decals that came with the model kit were pretty old. Uh, we were we were able to salvage the uh, decals for the KC lights, and that was it. I think. Oh, and the uh, the shock absorbers. I think the shock absorbers say Monroe on there or. Um, Rancho, I should say. Uh, those were about, that was all that was salvageable out of the, out of the decal set. So um, they're languishing in the decal pit of hell now. Um, I was able to um, just sort of piece this thing together a little bit at a time. I wasn't rushing on it. I wanted to do my best job I could. Um, things that kind of annoyed me, though, were the uh, taillights, how those are supposed to be molded 
to go around this 90 degree turn here uh, and they're well short of 90 degrees so uh, that was a little bit of a disappointment and we all know that bending transparent plastic is not not easy especially something this small so um i thought we'll just have to live with it as it is and we'll move on from there so we did uh, another annoyance about this kit something that everybody is very very much aware of and the fact is the, they only have one direction on the tires and you can't flip them because the uh, the hub openings on one side are a different size than the back side so that's a bit of annoyance um doesn't look like Ravel is going to fix that anytime soon or never so it is what it is uh, other than that it was a fun little build. Um, I say little, but it's not. It's actually kind of a big boy, and he's uh, he is super delicate. I'm going to tip him on the side here. Hopefully, we don't bust off a mirror. Let's see here. So on the bottom, we just did some basic coloring for the underside of the interior bits, and then everything else was just semi-gloss black with a little bit of basic coloring on the engine. Um, I kind of had the idea of maybe taking this guy and getting him muddy and dusty and dirty and everything and then after we got finished with final assembly i was like ah, it's just too pretty i don't want to do that so so we're leaving them as is um the you know the hot wheels in good shape so might as well leave him in good shape right so uh we'll see if we can tip him again one more time so you can get a peek down inside the uh, the hole for the engine it's got the high rise twin carbs and then I've got some wiring going on back there. You can just barely see the red wiring. Um, so yeah, the engine uh, detail is super, super basic. Um, that's it. I mean, the whole complication of this thing was just the paint scheme. And uh, it really taxed my masking and taping skills. But um, I, I like how it turned out. I, I really dig it. Um, there was times when I thought, do I even need the red stripes on it <laughs> type of thing? But then as I look at it now, I'm like, yeah, I, it really, I really like how it looks. Um, I do have a couple of little oopsies here and there where the masking tape wasn't quite straight. But hey, if this guy was a low budget race driver and he was building this in his garage, it would probably look just like that anyway. So there you have it. All right, that's it for Polar Plus. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. I appreciate that very, very much. We have another final coming up on our Porsche pretty soon, as well as one for Optimus Prime. Uh, remember, the uh, Clonatoy group build is going on until the end of February. We were just contacted by a friend of ours that they're getting going on their kit just now. And I know there's a few other guys out there that haven't finished yet, and we're hoping for uh, updates on those. Um, in the meantime, everybody take care, and uh, we'll talk to you a little bit later on. Bye now.